Hello there, this is Alex, and welcome to Boomstick Gaming. I have noticed there's an abnormal amount of non-tips tips videos out there for Neo 2, and you all deserve better, so allow me to present to you some of the more advanced gameplay tips and hidden mechanical tricks for Neo 2 that will hopefully help you out. I'm going to assume you know the bare minimum basics of playing a third-person action RPG, because in this, I will be covering things like attack cancelling, custom active skills, block buffering, secret gestures, the anti-dash attack, and many unique things you can do with your guardian spirits, so you'll definitely want to stick around to the end for all those. This will primarily be highlighting things that are new to Neo 2, but for anyone who missed the original game, I will be tossing in a few things you really should also know that carry over here in the sequel. We have a decent amount of things to break down here, so snug up to your favorite Kadama, it's now time to obsess over killing every yokai in sight in the coolest ways possible. This is just one of many uses of the burst counter I'll be showing off in this, but first off, using a well-timed burst counter to cancel out of attack animations at any point. Performing a burst counter by pressing R2 in circle does cost anima, but this can make or break a fight if used to cancel out of attacks, specifically the ones with the longer ending lag. Some attacks have multi-hit elements to their animation, and those can be cancelled out at any point as well, so get creative. You can use these attack cancels to get in a hyperspeed heavy attack, save yourself from an accidental long animation, last second evade an oncoming attack, or just use it to mix up your combo game. For many of the burst counter tricks I have coming up in this video, I found the Feral style burst counter to be the most reliable since it has a built-in dodge, but all of the other Guardian Spirit types will perform these same techniques just to varying degrees of success. By this point already in the video, you should have somewhat of an idea if you enjoy my more straightforward approach to gaming coverage with a focus on gameplay mechanics and systems, and if you do, now is the perfect time to key pulse that subscribe button because it really helps me out in the long run. Now over to break exhaustion, which is the state your character enters when you block or get hit with no key remaining, which opens you up for all kinds of damage. There are actually two reliable ways to escape from this a little quicker, first of which is by using one of your active soul core abilities mapped to either R2 in square or R2 in triangle. Doing this as soon as you enter the broken exhaust state can actually break you free, and the best soul cores for this will be the ones that activate quickly or physically move your character. I personally prefer having the end key soul core equipped at all times since it's fast and launches you immediately up into the air, which is exactly where you want to be if you're about to get punished for mismanagement of your key gauge. This is not the only way to get out of this however, and just like the attack cancelling I described a moment ago, a burst counter can break you free as well. Like you might expect, the feral guardian spirit wins the day here since it will also move you out of harm's way. I'm just going to come out and say it, the dash attacks in Neo will most likely only get you into trouble instead of being a good way to start a fight. Dash attacks do have a unique animation, but since they do not combo into subsequent attacks, they often leave you vulnerable for a moment before you can really continue your offensive. Something I found to be a much better way to start fights is to sprint at enemies just like normal by holding X, but as soon as you get into range, instantly let off the X button and press the attack button. This allows you to still get up on enemies just as quickly as a dash attack, but the big difference here is that you can continue to combo them just like normal without pause. If you find the dash attack is working for you, that's great, but for me, I will always be going for the anti-dash attack thank you very much. The next one is a holdover feature from Neo 2, but still a fun one to know if you don't. This game's version of Mimic Chess will pop out this little yokai creature when you go to open them, and then force you to fight a doppelganger of yourself to claim the loot. There is a way to neutralize this entire situation though, and by going into your gestures to do a little whistle, we'll coax these strange creatures straight out of the chest. 
That is only half of it, however, because next, watch the gesture that your doppelganger does, perform the same one in the allotted time, and then your opponent will freely give up all the loot that should have been in the chest. Although not necessarily a tip or a completely hidden mechanic, the custom active skills which you will unlock in the Shifting skill tree are never really explained in the game, amounting to an important system that could go easily missed. Once these skills are unlocked, they will not apply passively, and you'll need to head over into the skill customization screen to assign them to specific moves. You cannot map the same one twice, nor do they apply to multiples of the same skill if they're available in different stances, but these do allow for a much greater degree of control over how powerful your special attacks can be by adding elemental effects or just by adjusting their core properties. You can also save these customizable effects as loadouts, so you can take your most used favorite skill from your preferred stance, save a separate loadout for each elemental type mapped to it, and then for boss fights, you can switch out to whichever the boss is weak to, to inflict some free elemental damage without having to apply anything to your weapon. The back step can be performed by pressing X without any input on the analog stick, allowing for a unique attack out of this. This is somewhat standard in third person action games like this, and the attacks you gain from low and mid stance are really not that much more different than your core moveset, but in high stance, backstep attacks take on a whole new importance. Not every weapon type has a great high backstep attack, but you may want to play around with these with your preferred weapon to see if you're missing out on a really strong way to evade and retaliate. Although not quite as reliable as it was in Neo 1, block buffering your dodges here in Neo 2 is still a pretty good, safe way to additionally protect yourself. What I mean by block buffering is holding down the block button during your dodges and a fraction of a second after to account for missing the proper evade window on incoming attacks by covering yourself with a block the instant your dodge animation completes. If you timed your dodge correctly, no problem, damage avoided, but if you didn't, block buffering has your back because it can save you from damage at the cost of some key. This is most useful against wide sweeping multi-hit enemies, or for those pesky yokai who tend to flail about in a manner that's a little harder to react to. This is somewhat explained in the Guardian Spirit tutorial, to where you can hold down Triangle to charge up for one big attack, but additionally, this also powers up your spirit's weapons for a couple of seconds and after. This will boost your attack damage overall while active, and makes for a great way to kick off your combos. This applies to all the Guardian Spirit types, and consider doing this as the first thing you do when you enter Beefcake mode. Another holdover from Neo 1, and something anyone who played that will be greatly familiar with, but still, if you're just now coming into Neo 2, allow me to present to you these creepy wall dudes. These will be guarding secret passages hidden among many of the levels, and you'll need to perform a specific random gesture in order to get them to move. If you pick the wrong gesture multiple times, these will try to kill you, but if you pick the right one, they will gladly just move aside. The best way to go about this is to pick gestures from each of the categories, blue, yellow, or red, and not use repeat gestures from the same category. If you happen to fail this, don't worry, you can always just fight your way past, but now you know the safer way to do it. Lastly, using the invulnerability of your Guardian Spirit's burst counter move to avoid some hazards. Regular dodging through things will often not really keep you free of harm, however burst counter sometimes can. Like you have probably come to expect, the feral form for this is best since it gives you moving and vulnerability frames. This might just help you nail down those speedrunning tactics, get you past some annoying hazards, or just be used to show off to your friends.
Those are all 10 of the advanced tips and tricks I had for you today, and I hope that at least a few of these will help out with your general survivability in Neo 2, or even more importantly, just allow you to have a bit more fun in the game because that's really what it's all about. Now to wrap all this up, if you like my style of informative gaming coverage, consider subscribing to Boomstick Gaming for more. You can find me on Twitter at BoomstickAlex, and if you happen to learn at least one thing from this, give this video a thumbs up, and if you're a pro and knew all this already, hey pretty cool, give it a thumbs up as well. Lastly, a special mention to the patrons and YouTube members at the highest tier that you're seeing on screen who really help to keep this individually owned and operated channel going. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching.